Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I like to discuss the promotion of Grant Shapps, uh, an experienced con artist, to the position of Defence Secretary. I'll be discussing how the general change of Defence Secretary, as well as the specific appointment, mean a worrying time for UK defence. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So, uh, you know, a new appointment to a very senior role, so couldn't pass without comment. And the, the previous Defence Secretary, Ben Wallace, who had led what was probably the most stable department for years. He was Defence Secretary for about ooh, what, four years. That's unknown. There's no, I don't, think, I don't think there isn't a government department that's had a Secretary of State for that long. That is the, by far and away, the most stable government department. And uh, he announced that he wanted to stand down at the next election anyway. But then he announced he wanted to stand down as Defence Secretary much sooner than that. Strongly believed it was a bit of a sulk because he wasn't going to be the next Secretary General of NATO. Um, now, in a sense, I don't blame ministers for stepping down if they no longer want a role. A minister who's not really wanting to do the job will do a poor job. And Wallace has, for all of his faults, been regarded as a defence secretary who took the role seriously and won the approval of military leaders. Now, I will say this for him. Can you name any other secretary of state in recent years who has met with the approval of the key workers for whom their department operates? I can't think of any. That being said, getting a new Secretary of State to run a big department when there's only a year or so before the general election is always going to cause problems. You know, you, you, we talk about Sunak's government being a zombie government. I mean, this under any government would sort of create a bit of a, a zombie department feel. All government departments have issues, of course, and they all have plans to deal with these issues. But when the department gets a new Secretary of State, they're all put on hold because you know, the, the, the new minister will have different ideas. I mean, first of all, they need to be brought up to speed with how the department works. Like, in theory, if Sunak had appointed someone like Penny Mordaunt to the role, she would already be acquainted. She's already been Secretary of State. But any new minister still needs to be brought up to speed with the details of the policies here and now and progress made on various projects. And they may decide, well, that's not what I want, so you need to... You know, and it all takes time. And the new minister may sort of say, no, I'm not really sure that that's the way we should be going. So you end up with some projects, they might slow down, they might be shelved, they might even be scrapped altogether. And then plans drawn up for entirely new policies because this new minister wants to be the broom that sweeps clean. It's like, oh, I want to stamp my mark on this thing. So even if you're coming into a department that's running well, no politician really feels they can just chug along. They have to stamp their market. Well, this is what I've done. Even if that means shelving something that's a good idea and adopting something that's a bad idea. And officials within the department know that, you know, it's, it's things aren't going to get done now before the election. Probably it's just not going to get done. After the election, they'll not only be a new defence secretary, but representing a completely different party and policy priorities. And it all adds up to a department which is now just going to bob along, treading water until the election. But then we come to the appointment of Shapps specifically, because he creates extra problems for the department. Not just because he was a known con man, responsible for basically committing fraud via pyramid schemes in a series of get-rich-quick scams some years ago. That would mark him out as unsuitable for any high office. It's that he is a very close ally of Sunak, and, and this is why I fully expected Shapps sort to get the job. Um, Sonak would, of course, want his close political friend in a senior role. I think if Sonak could have gone for a wider reshuffle, if he were able to get rid of Braverman, then I think Shapps would have been Home Secretary as he was the first time that she was sacked. But Braverman seems to be stuck there. But Wallace actively wanted to step down. So there was going to be a senior cabinet role coming up. So defence it is for Shaps. Um, but the thing is, Sunak is the sort of Tory who doesn't take public spending on anything seriously. Now, Tories in general do not like public spending. They make no secret of this. But there are some who at least think that the state should be providing funding for the police and the military. That is the conservative way. 
a strong police force to keep the local population in line and a military to keep everyone else out. Health, education, transport, energy and other public services can all go to hell as long as the government have the bodies needed to maintain order. But Sunak just wants to cut public spending across the board. He is occasionally persuaded that some cuts are politically tricky, but defence tends not to be one of these. So Wallace had actually been battling with Sunak for years, with Sunak as both Chancellor and then Prime Minister, to take defence spending seriously. And he was able to use his popularity with the party to get a few concessions. But it was always a battle. Well, now the department's to be run by Shaps. Sunak now has a defence secretary who will behave himself and not kick up a stink about budgets. He will publicly call for funding, of course he will. Last year, Shaps advocated a defence budget of 3% of GDP, which would actually be a big boost on what it currently has. But he is essentially supporting Sunak, not lobbying for UK defence. So the department has lost a strong advocate and now has a puppet in charge. And given how important the department is in supporting Ukraine, building up modern defences for the UK, there are a lot of people not really convinced by this appointment. Shaps has shown no sign of understanding anything about either defence or foreign affairs. His allies say in his defence, but he's unflappable, he will keep calm in a crisis. And I will say, I absolutely accept that. I definitely view him as someone who doesn't panic. I don't think I can ever remember a case. And politicians are often put on the spot. So you will see which politicians panic and which don't. I'm absolutely convinced that, yes, he is someone who keeps his cool. Yeah, I'll give him that. But a calm ignoramus can still make poor decisions. And when you look at the previous positions that Shaps has held in government, he's never, re he's never reformed anything, really. Arguably, some of the most impactful work was uh, under David Cameron. But, you know, even then, he didn't like do anything that just made things better. His past experience speaks of someone who stifles the work of his department, not drives it. For example, his previous brief as energy secretary, he made sure that a much needed expansion of renewables couldn't happen. He is personally opposed to onshore wind farms, which means that that was the policy while he was energy secretary. He's also wasted departmental time on other hobbies of his, uh, housing minister, as transport secretary, for example. Like, the only competent thing I can find that he's ever done was he was the one who came up with the idea of appointing Linton Crosby to direct the Tory election campaign in 2015, which won them the election. But as this meant a majority Tory government and one that not only continued with austerity, but gave us Brexit as a bonus... Even this act of competence was powerfully against the interests of the country. So even when he gets things right, it's a bit of a problem for Britain. Mind you, his reward was to be almost instantly, well, actually instantly sacked, I think, by Cameron. From Cabinet, at least. He came back when Boris Johnson became Prime Minister. He's also been involved in dodgy financial dealings as uh, a minister, as well as before, you know, par for the course for Tory MP, you may think, you yeah, may be but he has been linked to a lot more dodgy dealings than most. Again, not really ideal where defence procurement decisions are involved. Mind you, I think the terrible truth of the matter is that Sunak could have appointed far worse to the role if you look at what he had available. Even some of his co Conservative colleagues have decried the fact that Shaps is never interested in the details of policy, only photo opportunities, and you go, yeah, that's true, absolutely true. But how many in the current cabinet who could have been promoted to this role are serious? Like some would say Penny Mordaunt, a previous defence secretary, or Tom Tugendhat, a former soldier. Neither of those people are serious either. They are both keen advocates of self-publicity. The main problem here is potentially less that someone clearly unsuitable like Grant Shapps was appointed, but that Ben Wallace stood down early. He was rare in... Despite being someone whose politics I deplore, nonetheless took his role in government seriously. The tragic fact is that the Conservative Party do not have a ready supply of these people. It's not that Grant Shapps is an unsuitable appointment and why didn't Sunak appoint someone suitable. I see it more as when Ben Wallace stepped down, there was never going to be anyone suitable. So all in all, it's not a surprising appointment. It is a purely political appointment, though. It, this is not an appointment made with 
who will be the best at shaping the UK's defence in mind. That is absolutely not what this appointment is. Sunak has promoted Shaps because he is politically aligned with him and also one of the better performers in TV interviews. Sunak needs media performers for high profile positions when the election campaign begins. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.